Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. And uh, today, friends, I'm going to be discussing with you um, a, a topic that I'm seeing over and over and over again uh, that's really sweeping the world. And that topic is uh, getting away from witnessing to the Jewish people. Uh, and... <clears throat> I've seen it with, with John Hagee. I have seen it with many, many ministers that God has a covenant with Israel separate from that of the Gentiles. That the Gentile uh, believers, their covenant is with Christ. And of course, the Jews, their covenant is with uh, Jehovah. And this is kind of where a line is being drawn in the sand. And I think that a lot of these pastors, they don't, they, they have to, you would think that they would have had to have reluctantly <clears throat> come to this type of way of thinking or this type of way of belief and probably more from the pressure of um, some of those uh, rabbis in the Messianic community uh, that are Jewish rabbis, some of the Orthodox rabbis in Israel uh, wherever it may be coming from, I'm seeing it more and more, and it's a very disturbing trend, uh, because truly, the scripture says, there's not another name given under heaven whereby you must be saved, but the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to say Yeshua HaMashiach because you're, you're an Israelite, you're a Hebrew, you speak the Hebrew language, I have no problems, no qualms with that at all either. Uh, you might be Spanish and say, hey, Jesus. Uh, you might be uh, European like my wife, uh, Isus, I believe is the way they say the name of Yeshua or Jesus. <clears throat> and although I agree with Mark, uh, Mark Bills, I've actually got a clip of his video I want to play here. There, there are several things that he states in here that I actually really appreciate. Uh, one of those being that he believes that Yeshua or Jesus is, uh, he is the one that spoke to Moses at the burning bush. He says he is the yod heh vav -He. But you can believe that <clears throat> and then also go to a, an extreme and in this case here, uh, Mark, he does say that he kind of, you know, it's like waiting on the Jewish people to really recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. So therefore, as long as they're calling on yod heh vav -Heh, they're in essence calling upon Yeshua. Uh, it's not quite like that, though. And, uh, and I know that there are people that go to Mark's, uh, uh, his church there that listen to this broadcast. And so I can only encourage and, and, and even say to the people that are listening today, uh, I'm not here to try to slam Mark. I'm here to try to help open the eyes of not only those that are falling uh, under, the, <clears throat> under the pressure of, of ministries like uh, Mark's. Uh, but and Mark, like I said, he's only one of, of thousands of churches that are doing this right now. They're backing away from witnessing to the Jewish people and in turn saying that the Jews are saved because they're calling on yod heh vav -Heh, or Yehovah or Jehovah or however people are trying to pronounce this name. All right, this is not the scripture and I'm going to really bring this home. I want to play though what Mark says here for about a two minute clip from, I'm starting at the 14 minute mark, we're going to go to about the 16, 30 minute mark um, and I'm not going to it's not going to be spliced or anything. You're just going to hear it straight there. And uh, and as I said, some of the things that he says, I agree with him on. Uh, but there are some there is some very critical uh, critical information that's being stated here that we've got to clarify. And uh, and and maybe if Mark would really listen to this with a sincere heart, I trust it'll bless him, uh, and that he may also recognize we can't go in this direction. Uh, I know he's under a lot of pressure though too because Mark is very much involved with the Jewish community in Israel, uh, very much involved with the Messianic ministries around the world. And for him to make this, to, to admit and, and, and stand up for the truth of the Word of God, it would really it would put him in an awkward position. So, but you know, listen, we either stand with the Lord's despised few or, or we don't. And, and my desire is that he really 
will take heed to what I'm saying and that it would be a blessing to him. Uh, I know he's very close to Rabbi Shapira, and I feel the same with Rabbi Shapira. My heart is not to uh, belittle these men, uh, but that God would open their eyes. Because as believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our desire should be that our people's eyes would come open. I know Mark says that his uh, father's side is from a Levitical side. There's debate in our my father's side as well. One side says they're from Levi, the other side says they're from uh, from Joshua. I don't know. I have no way of knowing the answer to these things anymore. It doesn't really matter to me as far as that goes. I do have cousins that have Levitical privileges and synagogues to this day that are Orthodox Jews. Uh, so who knows? Uh, I'm not here to worry about all that. At any point, though, and of course, both my parents are Jewish. Uh, Sephardic Jewish, my father, though. He is a Sephardic Jew. He, they were from Morocco. Uh, you guys know that. What am I even saying that for? It's a waste of time. Anyway, let's, let's listen, to, listen in. With what? The heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scriptures say, okay, now when it says the scriptures, back. You know what, let me back this up a little further, because he is speaking a little bit more, and I'm hoping he actually covers this too. So let me just back it up just a little bit. Maybe we'll actually, um, maybe we'll catch everything I was wanting, I was hoping he would have said. Let's listen to it again. Because two forces the righteous will live by faith. That is a Tanakh principle. Okay, are you ready now to go on a ride? Listen to Romans. Now we're going to just tackle some verses. Listen to Romans 10, 10 through 13. With what? All right, he's going to read Romans chapter 10 from verse 10 to verse 13. He should have read verse 9 as well. All right, just keep that in mind. We're going to go over this, but just keep that in mind. The heart man believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scriptures say, okay, now when it says the scriptures, back then was there a New Testament? What are they referring to? The Tanakh. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the yud hey vav -Hey. Whoever calls upon the name of the yud hey vav -Hey shall be saved. Where does this come from? Well, look at... All right. Now, the question is, he, sa he pr uh, says, he says, where does this come from? Now, he's going to give you two verses in the book of Psalms, but he doesn't give you the verse where it actually comes from. But let's listen. Psalm 116, 13. I will take the cup of Yeshua and call upon the name of who? The yud hey vav -Hey. All right. Again, I'm going to point to you a little bit later. I'm actually bringing these things out now. The scripture doesn't say he will take or he will lift up the, the cup of Yeshua. It's actually Yeshuot. It's the word salvation, but it's also the word salvation in the plural. And you have to understand the context in which David is speaking in. All right. But keep in mind, I do agree with Mark on the fact that he clearly brings out, and Mark does do a very good job on this, that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he is that Yehovah. And I've shown you guys so many illustrations throughout the scriptures about this. So, you know, <laughs> we could get into that all night long. The crown of thorns upon his head, for example. You know, what was that? That was showing that the same God that spoke to Moses from the burning bush, which was Ihaye Asha Ihaye, you know, who some would say was Yahweh, was the very one that was speaking to Moses and Yeshua when he spoke from the, uh, the crown of thorns showed that he was that same God in the midst of the thorn bush. When he puts the clay over the blind young man's eyes there and tells him to go wash in the pool of the uh, Siloam, he spit, made the little clay and, and put it on his eyes. What was he showing? He was showing that he was the same God that created and formed man from the dust of the earth, all right? So there's, there's just unbelievable amounts of scriptures that prove who he was. Let's listen on now. Look at Psalm 55, 16. As for me, I will call on God. The yud hey vav hey will save me. Look at Zephaniah 3, 8 and 9. Therefore wait upon me, says the yud hey vav -Hey, until the day I rise to the prey. 
My determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kings, to pour upon them my indignation. This is speaking of the last days. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth is going to be devoured in the fire of my jealousy. And then I will turn to the people the Hebrew language that they may all call upon the name of who? The yud hey bob hey to serve him with one consent. Okay, another correction we have to make even on this right here. All right. Now he says, he's quoting Zephaniah chapter 3, that God is going to return a pure language. Now he says the Hebrew language. Nowhere does it say in Zephaniah that he, return, he restores the Hebrew language. And in fact, this is right after the judgment when Christ returns and burns everything up on this earth. I would imagine a pure language that you can call upon the name of the Lord and truly know what his name is and say his name correctly would only come with that divine language like he spoke. That's a pure language. A pure language is what created the heavens and the earth. It couldn't have been the Hebrew language he created the heavens and the earth with. And the reason I say that is because if it was, the Hebrew language would still create. You could still say, Yehaye, uh, or excuse me, uh, you know, let there be light in Hebrew, Yahior, and there would be light. So there's a little bit more to this than what meets the eye. All right, let's listen on. Almost finished here. Where do we derive the authority to change God's name as it fits us and then have the audacity to say when we believe Yeshua? How many of you believe Yeshua is the Yudin Bafe? I do. I and agree. so to say someone who believes in the Yudhei Bave just because they don't know him as Yeshua any more than Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who didn't know Yesh, uh, Yudhei Bave except as El Shaddai, the Jews know the Yudhei Bave. We can't say they're not saved because they don't, a name hasn't revealed, revealed to them, especially a English mistranslated from the Greek mistransliterated word but now look at Romans let's go back to okay now in part he's right but he's really mistaken when it comes to the fact of being saved in this name of Yeshua and there is the excuse is not there all right let me let's, let me just back up a little bit here on this one last part I want you to listen to this again and we're going to go into this. We're going to go into this very deep. So please, I hope you got patience to listen to this. Any more than Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, who didn't know uh, Yudhei Bavhe except as El Shaddai, the Jews know the Yudhei Bavhe. We can't say they're not saved because they don't. A name hasn't revealed and revealed to them, especially a English mistranslated from the Greek mistransliterated word okay really the focus that mark does in this broadcast here is two things he one he's going to deal with the name of jesus all right and i'm in a complete uh when when i look at the name of jesus to me whether you say jesus for english whether you say yeshua for hebrew or uh isus or or jose uh, 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 uh however the spanish say it russian say it etc it does not matter which tongue you were born in that you say the name of jesus christ he honors that it all carries the same meaning as the word yeshua does now i know some people don't like that they say oh no you got to everybody's got to go back and, and, and know how to pronounce the hebrew god tells you in zaphaniah for example all right, now, as he as Mark brings out, you know, yod he vav he over in Zephaniah, right? But the, but the problem is, you have to understand, that's when Christ comes and destroys this earth and all the nations with it. And he's going to re, re, uh, restore a pure language, all right, to the peoples. All right, then you would know how to say Yeshua, all right? And the same thing, whether it be uh, yod he vav he, whichever way you want to look at it, or even when God spoke to Moses, ihaye asha ihaye, all right, I am that I am. 
Okay, and by the way, Mark, even I know you mentioned that part about uh, um, that uh, Abraham only knew El Shaddai. That's not true. If you look at the uh, uh, Aleppo Codex, we find out in the Syriac uh, Hebrew manuscript, one of the oldest ones there was, Abraham knew him as Ihaye Ashaye. Same name that Moses knew him by. Because Moses asks the question, what well, they will ask me, Mashimo, what is his name? What do I say to them? And God says to him, Yihaye Ashayaye, Shelachani, Eleachem. You know, I am that I am has sent uh, sent me unto you. Right? This is what he says there, right? All right, so anyway, let's take a serious look because this whole thing he quotes right here from Romans chapter 10 verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not sh shall not be ashamed all right that should have been your key right there believeth on him who Christ Jesus shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord is over, over all is rich unto all that call upon him Call upon him. Who's the him? The him is Yeshua. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? And that, of course, that also is showing that Paul knew that Jesus Christ was Yehovah. All right? But let's back it up a little bit. Like I said, verse 9, didn't even get read. This, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute then. So what is Paul doing here then? Paul is showing you that the fulfillment of verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Yehovah, shall be saved. Okay? And he's making that scripture, that scripture being fulfilled right here in verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, okay, Adonai Yeshua, or Elohim, Yeshua Elohim, Okay, or even Yeshua, Jehovah, however you want to say it, shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, now, oddly enough, let's continue on though. Let's back up a little bit further. Because the whole chapter is about Jesus Christ. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. Well, wait a minute. Mark, you just told the people if the, all they got to do is call upon the name of yod heh vav -Hey, and they'll be saved. Well, here Paul is, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And don't get confused either with Tovia Singer. You know, I love Tovia. I do love my brother. I, I do love him. I, I, I appreciate Tovia. We've written together many, many times. But Tovia, like for example, he says about Paul, he, he puts so much doubt in the people's minds and he says to them, well, Paul couldn't have been right. Hey, Bricks, one of the... Well, I'm paraphrasing Tovia, okay? So uh, it's not fair to, to do this this way, but, you know, Tovia will admit that what I'm about to say is true. He says it right out of his own mouth there, that when, when Paul speaks about seed, that he didn't say seeds plural, he said seeds singular, and it referred to Christ. And so Tovia says, Oh, through the Bible, there's no such thing as seeds, plural. It's always seeds, singular. You know why it's like that in the Bible? It's because of the fact that it always points to Jesus Christ himself as the Son of Almighty God. And Tovia, to prove to the people that you're wrong in what you're saying, I've got the Hebrew scroll, excuse me, the Qumran scrolls. I did it in a message that I spoke in Tennessee. And I haven't shared it with you guys yet here on my channel, Israeli News Live, but I will share it before too long. It's going to be on Patreon this weekend, that, that message there. But I show over and over and over in the Qumran scroll, Zarim, 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 seeds, 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 plural, plural, plural. Don't tell, and maybe Tovia, maybe my brother, he didn't know that. Maybe he doesn't know in the Qumran scrolls that the word seeds, plural, is used by the Jews of the time of Yeshua and 200 years before that on a regular basis. Praise be to God. And then we talk about these scriptures and everything. Oh, we inherit nothing, not but lies and vanity. 
And there's another one that Tovia tells the people, and the people believe it, you know, because Tovia says that he's a Jew, he should know, he should know the Hebrew and everything, and he says, you're going to turn to, going to, uh, we're talking about, you will uh, come to, oh gosh, I can't even think of the scripture name there, but anyway, when he does that, Tovia says this, and he says, you have to know the Hebrew, it's, the you is in the plural, like they're going to go back to the rabbis in Israel and say, we've inherited nothing but lies. No, it's not in the plural, Tovia, it's in the singular. And maybe you corrected that. I don't know. I know there's sometimes you'll do a debate and you realize you made a mistake and you go back and you correct it later. And I appreciate that about Toby. I really do appreciate that about him. Um, so, but I don't know if he corrected that. But the problem is, these are all these type mistakes that are made by people that are respected, especially in messianic communities. And please bear with me. Don't just hang up this video. Verse chapter 20, verse 25. I believe this is where this is at. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good and ordinances whereby they should not live. Whoa, not good. God gave them commandments that were not good? Sure he did. All right, so let me get back. I don't want to get too far off on this because we got a lot of ground to cover here tonight. All right. Verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. All right? You want to do the law? You got to keep it all. And you won't believe how many times ministers, not just, not just the laity, but ministers as well, will tell me that, Brother, I believe that we should keep this, these commandments. I believe we should keep the feast. And I, I know I've made a promise to the people. I'm going to do a message on the feast where Christ has fulfilled all these feasts. A lot of people believe, well, he, fed, he fulfilled all the fall feasts, but he never fulfilled all the, uh, excuse me, he fulfilled all the, uh, the, the spring feasts, but not the fall feasts. You know, just one simple one I'll just share with you, just right off the top. All right? Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. You don't believe that was fulfilled? If you don't believe it was fulfilled, then Christ is not the sacrificial goat. He is not the scapegoat. When he is a scapegoat, he bore the sins of Israel in his own body and took them far away. But he also became the sacrifice. He was able to carry those sins far away, and he was also able to lay down his life. And the Day of Atonement, the Yom Kippur, the Day of Mourning, is what they were doing when he died. Yom Kippur was already fulfilled. And yes, he was the Passover. And no, when people say, oh, they say, well, Yeshua, he kept all the law. He kept all 613 commandments of the law and everything. I challenge you on that one. I know people say, oh, no, 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 no. Because I have people tell me, well, Jesus, you know, no, he did he take the bread, but he also sacrificed the lamb. If he had sacrificed the lamb, he would have denied the fact that he was the lamb of Almighty God. He could not sacrifice a lamb, and he could not eat of a lamb. This is why he did the Melchizedek priesthood. He took the wine. He took the, 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 the wine and the bread, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body. In other words, this was the lamb of God, the body of Jesus Christ. This is where the truth of this is at. You guys understand what I'm saying? I mean, I love you guys. I want you to really get this. All right? That's that new covenant. That's what This is what Melchizedek did with Abraham. He came and offered him bread and wine. That was the priesthood. He showed that he was that Melchizedek priesthood. But the righteousness which is of faith speak on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend unto heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Do you know that that very verse right there, who shall ascend into heaven, is used by the Talmudic rabbis of today, the Pharisees of today. They quote that Old Testament verse out of Deuteronomy. I forget exactly what chapter that's in right now off the top of my head, but they quote this verse here and they say, this is what gives the rabbis the authority on the earth and God is no longer allowed to speak, but we will speak for him and the prophets are silent as well whatever the rabbis say that's what God does no Paul clearly shows you this is applying to bringing Christ down from above or shoes shall ascend uh, descend into the deep that is to bring Christ up from the dead but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach see the whole, the new covenant of Christ is exactly what Abraham had. 
See, Abraham didn't have 613 uh, mitzvot to keep, did he? No, he didn't have that. Why? Because Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Is that right? Christ brought you back to the Melchizedek priesthood. All right? And the funny thing is, think about Levi. Think about Aaron. What was the first thing that Aaron does? I mean, Moses don't even get off the mountain and Aaron's already got a golden calf for the people to worship. Be sure to watch that video that I did on Patreon. I know some of you have already seen the one I did about the serpent and the genealogy of the serpent that came through Levitical priest, the Kohanim, according to the book of Ezra. But in there, I take you through the Qumran scrolls as well. I also take you through the artifacts where you get the Avis bull, Molech, the god that they serve. And, and, and this is in Israelite pottery, 900 years before Christ even come on the scene, and they call that, they call Molech, they call him Yahweh. Ah, get that. In the Paleo Hebrew inscription, Yahweh and Asherah, Asherah, his wife. What in God's name were the Israelites worshiping? Th thank God for Josiah. And you ever notice with Josiah, people never even pay attention to this. Josiah, the king that raised up that was a godly little boy that raised up to be king over Israel, when they found the scroll in the temple, he ripped his garments because they had, he realized they had been sinning all this time. My question is, is why was the word of God hidden in the first place and what in God's name were the people worshiping instead? Well, it looks like they were worshiping Molech, and they were calling Molech Yahweh, just like Aaron did when he brought the golden calf out of the fire. I know he said, throw the fire, and it never came out like that. You know, do you really, I mean, is that really what happened? Well, maybe so. Who knows? The devil gave him whatever kind of God he wanted him to serve. Do you know in the Qumran scrolls, Levi himself, the very father of Moses, his grandson, great, great, great grandfather, whatever it is, back, Aaron as well, he prophesied in his own writings that his own descendants would pervert the word of God in the end of days to a place that would be unthinkable. This was Levi. And by the way, in that same writing, he lift up Joseph. He, he loved his brother and his sorrow for his brother for the sins that he'd committed against his brother. Amazing. Then we get in that, but that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now you know the whole, he's applying the scripture that is written in the Old Testament about calling upon the name of the Lord to Christ himself. All right, there we go. Now, where do we see this? See, now, Mark's going to take you to Psalm 116. I'm going to go there in just a moment. But also, though, we know this is already fulfilled because Peter in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, after the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. And by the way, if you're one of our friends that go to Mark's church there, and you may call it something different, you may call it a synagogue, whatever it may be, God bless you guys for watching. But I will say one thing there. Let me go ahead and bring this out while I'm here because I'm sure many of Mark's people might listen to this video. And, and I don't mean this in, in any disrespect, but I have to just, this has got to be brought out. Zechariah chapter 8. This was a dispute between me and Mark. And uh, more so it was between me and Rabbi Shapira because of the taking a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. And of course I was being told that my Hebrew was atrocious. Uh, well, the Israelis listened to it as well, and they said, no, I speak Hebrew like a southern guy would speak it, just have an accent. I have trouble with words here and there, I'm dyslexic. I have the same trouble in the English language as well as I do the Hebrew language. So, it's not, nothing, nothing unusual. Last verse right here, okay? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take a hold out of all the languages of the nation, shall even take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Now, Mark and Rabbi Shapiro both focus on the next verse saying, we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. And Mark, listen, my brother, I, I, I really, I ask you to really pay attention to this. 
All right, and maybe you don't know Hebrew that well yourself. I don't know. But Rabbi Shapira does know, and he should have pointed this out, but he doesn't point it out. All right, now I've got this nice little, well, it's not going to do it. Let me just highlight right in here for you right here, okay? When they take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, it's not in the plural, okay? Vehi chazeku bekanaf. The wing, they take, and they will take a hold of the wing, ish Yehudi, of a Jewish man, singular. All right? They don't even, it doesn't even say sitzit. It's bikanaf. Which I know that uh, Moses, when he gave the command to tie the tzitzit, he said to tie it on the bikanaf, on the wing of the garment, and so therefore it's implied that it's a tzitzit. All right? And the reason why I say it was not the Sesito, because if you look in the scripture in the Hebrew Matthew, we find that they took a hold of Yeshua's Bikanaf when he was up in the Galilee region. Okay? But the woman at the well, or say not the woman at the well, the woman with the blood issue, she took a hold of his Sitzit in the Hebrew Matthew. All right? So a little difference there, and I thought it'd be good for you guys to know that. But it's in the singular. Right? Then it says, Le mor nelecha im ham, okay, okay, uh, saying, We will go with you. Ki shamanu elechim im ham, for we hear that God is with you. Where is, where, why do we have the plural there though? If the ten people of the nations are taking the hold of only one Jewish man, not a Jewish nation, then that's, and that's what's totally missed by Mark and it's totally missed by Shapira. They don't even bother to tell you this. They only focus on, we hear that God's with you, with you, with you, with you. Imham, 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 Forget about Ishihudi, Ishihudi, Ishihudi. Jewish man, Jewish man, Jewish man, singular, 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 singular. Right? You don't want to tell nobody about that one. Why? Because it was fulfilled in Acts. When all the Judeans from all over the world came down to Israel. And when they heard that God was with them, the 120 that were in the upper room, that had taken a hold of the wing of the Jewish man, Jesus Christ, and because they had taken a hold of the wing of the Jewish man, Jesus Christ, these 10 of the nations, what did they do? They wanted to know, men and brethren, what can we do to be saved? But before that happens, this is what happens here in Acts, right? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But all those ones that were from all over the world, here, here's, here's the ten of the nations. Now, we don't know the exact number. Nobody says it. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Now, the actual Greek word is they were Judeans. In other words, they were descendants of Israel. The Israelites, right, are, are of Judea. They were Prithians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus and Asia. Goes right on down. All these places, even strangers of Rome, both Jew and Gentile alike were there. Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and you that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heavens above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. yod vav What? Now see, this is, why Mark, this is one of the scriptures why Mark knows that Yeshua is yod vav Yehovah. And this is why Paul 
even though they could say the name of Jehovah themselves back then, he knew over here in chapter 10. He knew plainly, as he said, they have a zeal of God. Right? But he said, my desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Well, Mark, they weren't being saved just because they could say the divine name of God. It wasn't happening for them. Why? Because Christ had come. And when Christ came, he was the fulfillment of the prophecy. He was the fulfillment of what God said. A prophet like it unto me that I will raise up from among thy brethren. Oh my gosh, Mark, why do you see? This is why you can't do that. you got to get him, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Let's look at Psalm. Mark quotes from Psalm. He doesn't, tell, he doesn't even take you to, to, to the book of Joel where it's actually quoted from. Right here, Joel. Here it is, Mark. Joel. All right? Now, for those of you that uh, have an English Bible, uh, Joel is... You have to actually go to chapter 3. It's in chapter 2 of your English Bible and, and the Hebrew Bible. It's actually chapter 3. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem there shall be those escape of the Lord hath has said among the remnant those who whom the Lord shall call. There's your remnant too, remember? There's supposed to be a remnant. See, you're putting the scriptures in the future. That there's going to be a remnant. The house of Israel has got to return. Well, the house of Israel returned in the book of Acts. They had been scattered to all the nations. Jesus said, I have come only unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He commanded his disciples, go only unto the sheep of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Because Christ knew that on the feast of Pentecost, they were going to come in. And they would be there when the Holy Spirit would be poured out. When God would pour down that blessing, that fire of Almighty God. By the way, tongues of fire that you see written over there in the book of Acts, do you know that's the terminology used over in the Qumran scrolls as well? The tongues of fire. Oh, wow. Mark, why didn't you take them there? Because you were afraid that if you take them there, they would realize. See, God gave you the ability to recognize who Yeshua was, but then you blind the Jewish people. You don't want them to know. Who he is. You know, my wife had the most beautiful revelation recently, and she spoke about it up there uh, at the conference in Tennessee, that Israel was blinded in part, in part, that you might have sight, quoting Paul's prophecy. My wife said to me, have you ever thought about this, honey? She said, they were in partly blind. Blind to what? Christ being the Messiah. She said, so they were not blind to the scriptures. They were not blind to the word of God, but they were blind to Yeshua being the fulfillment of that word. And she said, that wasn't the Pharisees either, because the Pharisees, when Yeshua says that they were blind, they said, we be not blind. Yeshua said, you're right, you're not blind. Had you been blind, you'd, you'd find mercy. But now your sin remaineth with you. He also said, except that you believe that I am he. In other words, except that you believe that I am that yod heh vav heh, you will die in your sins. And then you mean to tell me you're not willing to witness to my own people the blood of Jesus Christ that saved them from sin. The only thing that can give them the life, that they need that life that was in Christ Jesus but you'd rather cut them off and only cut them off. You want to cut off the Christians that do believe that Jesus Christ is Messiah and tell them to go underneath a bunch of Talmudic rabbis and learn a bunch of garbage when even, oh my gosh, Rabbi Shapira says to, he says, I did, I know I disagree with a lot of things the rabbis say, but it's okay. Just, you know, Christ will correct them when he comes. He already did, Mr. Shapira. He corrected them 2,000 years ago, and you still reject it. And the same lies that were taught 2,000 years ago by the rabbis that Jesus said, except that you believe that I'm he, you'll die in your sins. Those same rabbis, their same descendants are here today, believe in the exact same lie, and you tell Christians to go underneath that garbage? Repent, both of you. Oh, my gosh. So you quote from Psalm. And you say, this is where this is from. You said they're going to take up the cup of Yeshua. Right, right here is where you get that from. They're going to take up the cup of Yeshua. 
And then they will call upon the name of yod heh vav -Hey. All right, well, to begin with, it doesn't say Yeshua. It says Yeshuot. It's salvation in the plural. Because Yeshuot is so, isa, okay? U b'shem Yehovah ikra. All right? Why does he say it in the plural? Do you know what that cup is? Do you realize what you have to do to take up the cup of Yeshua? If you want to call it the cup of Yeshua, the cup of salvation? Now, I don't doubt that it's a prophecy of Christ as well. I agree. I, you know, Mark probably have a little something on that right there. But that salvation is in the plural. It's one reason why I like when I speak to my Jewish brothers and sisters, I'm not ashamed to use the name of Jesus Christ. Because Yeshua is the word salvation in Hebrew. And not always will a Jew associate the word Yeshua as the same as Jesus of Nazareth. All right? So you have to be careful there. But notice what David does say. My vows will I pay unto the Lord, yea, in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. There's a cup of Yeshua. Yeshua said, can you drink this cup? Can you drink of this cup? And they, the woman said, yea, I can. Because to drink of his cup would bring about a lot of martyrdom. And this is why Yeshuot is used right there. Because it's applying to his saints. Salvation of his saints because of the death and the cup that they drink. <sighs> Blessed be the Lord. And of course he quotes from Psalm 55. Right? Now, we need to move forward though. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, it states here, verse 11, This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. It shows that he is Jehovah, as you say. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. What name is that? Just as he brings it out up here. But be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Shem Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before here, before you whole. Right? This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that is. Ay, ay, ay. John also says, I am coming, my, quoting Yeshua himself, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. This is, he's talking about the forefathers of the Orthodox community of today, right? What does he say? He says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Mark, they were calling on yod heh vav -Hey a whole lot. And he says, you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. You have to come to Christ if you want that life. Because in him was that life. When God breathed upon Adam, he, he breathed in him. Let's go right to it real quick. we got to deal with this. Oh my gosh. Blessed be the Lord. Right? Where is it at? Verse 7, I think it is. Right? Here we go. Yes. Right here. He breathed in his nostrils. He breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Epoch be, excuse me. Epoch be, be, be pa'av nishmar chayim ve'achi ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. He breathed in his nostrils the chayim. What is the chayim? It's from the eighth chayim, right here, right here. Here you go. Here you are. Mi adama kol eitz nechamad. Limoe Vetov. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, wait a minute. I gotta get the, I'm trying to find the right place here. Every tree, okay, here it is, right down here. And in the midst of the garden, Ve'ez Chaim Betoch Hagan, Ve'ez Da'at Tov Ve'ra'ah. The fruit of the tree of life. Christ is the tree of life, and that fruit was breathed in Adam. But God had to guard that tree, put the angels there and guard it because if their children born in sin were to receive the same life, they'd live eternally. No wonder why Christ breathed on his apostles after his resurrection. He says, receive you the Holy Spirit. He's given them that life. Praise be to God. 
how do people miss it? I don't know. <laughs> so John, Yeshua says, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor which cometh from God only? Do not, they, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. There it is. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Whoa. Now we're going to get into the depth of the, of the whole thing. Here we go. And Acts also brings it out to whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets as the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God. This is in Acts chapter 3. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto to your brethren, liken unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, and whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear, that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And you mean to tell me, Mark, and, and John Hagee, and all you other preachers out there that think that the Jewish people don't need the witness of Jesus Christ, that, that that's going to do them any good to quote yod heh vav -Hey? Let me show you why. In Exodus, all right, we're going to go to Exodus. We're going to go right here around chapter 14. Let me get you the right verse. Exodus chapter 20, all right? Verse 12 will start. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. He's given the Ten Commandments, right? We go through that. Don't covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass. And by the way, when he gets to the whole part about the Sabbath and stuff, you know, this is another one that gets me right there. And I, I hear these rabbis quote from their Talmud and everything, and they say that, oh, we can use a Gentile to do the work on the Sabbath day. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. God said that even your servant was to rest. Even your ox, your animals were all to rest. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before you, that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, You yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make me gods of silver or gods of gold. You shall not make unto you an altar of earth that thou shalt make unto me. Right? And he goes into that, right? But here's the whole point though. God on that day, the children of Israel rejected yod heh from speaking to them directly. Alright? Deuteronomy. Alright? Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 14. Let me make sure I'm in the right chapter. Yep, chapter 18. We'll start verse 14 here. Let's start with verse 12 again. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination of the Lord, because those abominations of the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. Thou shalt be wholehearted with the Lord thy God. yod heh vav -Heh, by the way. For these nations thou art to dispose, hearken unto soothsayers and to diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. A prophet will the Lord thy God raise up unto you, from the midst of you, of thy brethren, liken unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, and according to all that thou dost desire of the Lord thy God on Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let, not, uh, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord. Let me not hear again the voice of Jehovah. yod heh vav -Hey. Let me not hear again the voice of yod heh vav -Hey, my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well said that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, liken unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, and shall, uh, excuse me, and all that I shall 
command him, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken, who, in other words, whosoever will not hear unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So when Jesus said, except that you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. That's what God said to Moses. There's one that testifies against you and even Moses. So if you take Christ away from the Jews, you will have the blood of their souls upon your own hands. Think about it. And think about it long and hard. I'll tell you what, friends. You know, I love you guys tremendously. And Mark and Mr. Shapiro and John Hagee, all you ministers all over the world that are teaching these lies here. I'm not saying this to... I'm disappointed with you. I can't say I'm not angry with you. I am. I really am. My whole life, I have longed for my people to know Jesus Christ the way I did. I prayed for 10 years for my mother to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't that she didn't know who he was. And it wasn't that she was practicing in the synagogue. She wasn't. We were, as they called them, renegade Jews. We didn't go to synagogues. All right? But my family knew who they were. They just, they were secular Jews. Nobody fancy. Uh, you want to talk about the, um, the past? Yes, I've got grandfathers that were rabbis. All right? But the thing is, there's been a perversion in this day. And there's been someone who's tried to put the blinders over on you guys. God made a covenant with Israel. And this is why God always gave them a prophet. He gave them a prophet. He gave them a prophet. He gave them a prophet. But when Christ came, you ever notice? He didn't have to send any more major prophets anymore. Do you know why? Life had come down. And not only had life come down, but that life of Christ was imparted. You have to understand, it's not just to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But when you say it with faith, he will impart his own life within you. That's what God was trying to do with Israel 3,500 years ago in the wilderness journey. He came down. The fire was on the mountain. Why do you think it says cloven tongues of fire was on each and every one of them? Do you know in the Qumran scrolls, it says about the inside the Holy of Holies that the, the tongues of fire were there. The spirit of the living God that wanted not to dwell in a temple made with hands, excuse me, yeah, a temple made with hands, but he wanted to live within your heart. And God wanted to live in their hearts then, but they would not receive him. So God gave a temporal thing. Temporarily, there was mercy extended. And he gave them a Levitical law. Again, a temporal law. Why? Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Therefore, they got a law that was of knowledge of good and evil. When Christ came. He was the fulfillment of the law. He was life itself. God gives you two trees. Which one do you want? Do you realize you're eating from one of the trees today? You're either eating from the tree of life, which is Christ, which is, he is the Lamb of God. Is he in you? Is he part of you? Is that the, is that the bread of life you've taken daily by reading his words and believing upon him? Are you willing to take up the cup, as David said in Psalm 116, because it's Yeshua, it is plural, it is salvation, plural, when you take up his cup? Or are you living by the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Are you living by only the laws? You feel you're, you're still in bondage. Do you know God says that he that keeps that law, he's going to be required of every letter of it. Why do you think Joel, Job, Joel said, Job says like this? He says, you know, though the skin worms destroys this body, 
Yet in my flesh, my eyes will see, not another set of eyes, but these eyes will see. I, will, I know my Redeemer liveth, and at the last day, he will pray, he'll come up on the earth, and my eyes shall see him and behold him. He knew that Christ was coming. He was part of the resurrection written in Matthew. What is it, chapter 27 or chapter 28? I forget which chapter it was now. David, all of the, all the apostles, they rose up and they went with Christ. You're no longer under bondage. If you, if, you, if you are eating from the tree of life, if you have taken in the Holy Spirit and you're feeding on the tree of life, which is Christ, you have no need of that tree of knowledge any longer. Adam and Eve did eat from it. You know, it's interesting. Another revelation that my wife got a little while back was when she saw where Yeshua cursed the fig tree. And yet, and its leaves withered. It said there was no fruit on it. Why? Because, by the way, it's the Pharisees that are the fig tree. The priest. When Christ came, they had no fruit. They were a tree, all right, but there was no fruit. And when he was hungry... God said there would be a famine in the last days, not for, not for bread and water, but for hearing the word of God. There was no fruit on it. My wife said God cursed that fig tree. That fig tree represented Israel, that they bring forth fruit no more, and they've not been able to bring forth fruit since then. It was dead. Now the scripture does say when you see the fig tree blood budding, and all the other trees putting forth their buds know that it's even at the door. Oh yeah, they can put forth leaves. That's a bud, but they can't produce fruit any longer. See, Christ is an olive tree. And by the way, if you ever look at what Paul says in Romans, this is another reason why you know who Yeshua is. See, he talks about the natural olive tree that the they were all grafted into that natural olive tree. And of course, he shows you that Christ is that tree. Christ Jesus is the root of that tree. But they were cut off for unbelief. That tells you right there that Yeshua was the same God that spoke to Moses. And he said, you Gentiles were from a wild olive tree and you were grafted in contrary to your own nature. And again, you know, like my wife saw that beautiful revelation I mean, that, that, was, that was amazing. You know, see, the, the, the Pharisees, they were not blind. So Jesus says, your sin remains with you. So the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, they died in their sins. Except for the ones that did believe, like Paul. Paul believed. Nicodemus believed. And I'm sure there's many more that believed even afterwards. Just like you have today. Nehemiah Gordon. He's a, he's a descendant of Pharisees. But he must have been from that side that didn't get their seed mixed up over there in Babylon. I'm going to be teaching on a message on Babylon for you as well. Ah. Yeah, you mingled the holy seed. They're getting ready to build. They got the temple going up and everything. The wall, the wall. You know how the scripture talks about prophecies of the wall? That wall is that, that wall there. Mm. I've been too long. I love you guys. I really do. Listen, I want to pray with you now. And you guys know I don't pray very often like this. If you've been guilty, you've been living off the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you're going to have to, you, to understand that better, you'll have to, I'm going to actually have to do another message on that altogether. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Right? They hung Christ on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know? I had a discussion with a precious brother recently, and we were discussing. You know, he's talking about Christ kept all the law. I said, no, he, I know, he broke the law. Brother, no, he didn't break. I said, yes, he did. So said, you may not realize it, but like the woman that was caught in adultery, and all these rabbis brought out, they brought that woman out, ready to stone her, and they wanted to test Jesus. Got to try him out, see? See if he go. see what he's going to say. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Moses says we are to stone her and put her to death. Well, Moses also said you should bring both the man and the woman, right? They didn't do that, but it doesn't matter. Still, though, the Bible said, the, the law said, stone her, put her to death. That's true. Jesus said, whichever one of you is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And what he said was true, too. But, you know, he actually broke that commandment that Moses said. 
He broke that Levitical law. Why? He was a tree of life, not a tree of death. And the tree of life is the law that's written within your heart, on the tables of your heart. Your heart has two sides, left and right side. The ta two tables of stone, one of those laws was thou shalt not kill. And how can life take another life? It was put in there as a temporal thing because of the way man was. That's why Jesus says, you've heard it said of them of old time, but I say unto you, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, but he said, no, if the guy takes your coat, give him your cloak also. See? That's right. That was from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they hung him on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, those men, by the way, do you know why they walked away sorrowful? Some people said, and I used to even think too, they did it because they were probably lusting after her. They were already guilty in their own heart. No, their, their heart convicted them based on the law. See, their hearts were not convicting them based on the thought, as Yeshua says, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after, he's committed adultery with her already. If, if, they, if they believed Jesus, they would have believed that, and that might have convicted them as well. But no, they only believed the law. Why did they walk away sorrowful? Because they were children of adultery. Every single one of them. Jesus said, he called them, an, I think it was John, an adulterous generation. What was he talking about? Ezra chapter 9. I'm going to make sure, just in case it's the only video of mine you ever listen to. If it's the only time you ever hear me, I want you to know what the truth of God is. And then we're going to pray together, all right? So let me just take you over here to it. You got to see this. It's very important. Let's go to the book of Ezra. Where is it at? Help me, Lord. Here we go. Book of Ezra chapter 9. Right? Now, when these things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priest, right? And the priest and the Levites. Okay? Ha'am Yisrael ve'ha'kohanim ve'ha'lavim, the priest and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples and lands, doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Persites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. The Amorites were listed last. Remember, God said to Abraham when he was confederate with the Amorites during the times that Lot was taken prisoner, and they went and helped him to liberate him. And God said to Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. But on that day, the iniquity of the Amorite was made full when they had, because why? The Amorites, back during the time when, Mo, when the children of Israel in captivity in, in Egypt, the Amorites, along with all these other nations, they had gone through sorcery and all other kinds of evils, and they had mixed the, the, their seed with the Nephilim, the fallen angels. I know this because the book of, uh, of uh, Numbers, chapter 13, verse 33, I believe it is. I'm going to take you there because we gotta, we gotta, we're going to lay the axe to the root of the tree, and we're going to bring it down just like John said it's got to be done. The, the root of that tree is the devil himself, all right? So we're going to bring down that tree right now. This is, this is how Jesus, this is how he bruised the head of the serpent. He exposed the Pharisee bloodline that they were descendants. They were descendants of the Nephilim. It says right there, that, that this, and let me tell you something again. Tovia Singer, another one of his things there, he tells you Christians, oh, you got the, you, you, you accept the Talmud. You don't believe, you don't believe Talmud. He says you, you're, you're taking our vowels. You base all your translation on our vowels. You know, well, he's probably right in that. And I'll tell you what, though. I think they ought to throw the bowels out of there because they weren't in the Qumran scrolls, and I don't want them because you translate the Bible based on your own Talmudic doctrine, which is garbage. All right? Here it says right here, Visham Reinu et ha Nephilim, Nephilim bene Enoch. All right? These, the sons of Enoch were, the, were Nephilim. All right? It says in there, we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Enoch. But who's Enoch from? Me, Nephilim. Get rid of your Talmudic little uh, vowel points there because Moses spelled it Nephilim is what he spelled it. 
Enoch was from the fallen angels themselves. And this is what the Amorites and all the Hittites and them did. And that's when their, that's, but when their iniquity was finally full is when the Levites and the Kohanim, they married amongst them. And the scripture says in verse 2, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers had been first in this faithlessness. You perverted. You perverted. This is why the priests and Levites, in fact, separating from them didn't do you no good because what happened? Judas Maccabee, it even says in the writing about Judas Maccabee when he put on his armor, he looked like a giant. Nephilim is what he was. And the Hasmonean dynasty was nothing but made up in this, that's a conjecture, I'll admit, it's only a conjecture, but I believe the Hasmonean dynasty, which were the Pharisees of today, was nothing but a bunch of mingled seed from the Levites. They broke the commandment of God. They broke Deuteronomy chapter 21, where God had given them a command that they were not to have a spot in their, in their garments. They were not to be marrying these other women like they did. They broke it, and they were no longer allowed to give the bread at the altar because they had a blemish within them themselves, and, but they could partake. See, like Paul, he's able to partake of the bread. In other words, he can take of Christ, but he can no longer give it out anymore. What a mess. Anyway, if, listen, listen um, forgive me. I love you guys. I really do. Uh, and, and I know I've been excited, and some people don't like it when I yell, but you know, sometimes you got you to gotta make a point. Sometimes when your children are not doing right, if you don't make a point, if you don't really make sure they know what you're talking about, they could die. You, you, would you let your children go out and play in the street? You got cars going out there and everything? Would you just allow that? Or would you, you know, let them know? You, you know, I used to say it about uh, our, our children when they were real small. You know, they'd pick up a little butter knife, or not a butter knife, but some kind of little metal object. they go to stick it in the outlet in the house. And I made a point on this preaching years ago before I ever went on, on to videos here. I said, you know, what would you do? Oh, now, come on now, honey. Don't do that now. Little baby can't speak English, right? But if you smack that little hand, no, don't do that. What do you do? See, you're teaching that baby that don't know English yet. You're teaching him to resist the devil. Because, see, the devil is the one that wants to kill that little baby. The devil wants your child to get hold of some metal object, stick it in a wall socket, and if it don't kill him, he wants to electrocute the mess out of that little child because the devil don't care for children no way. Right? So he just soon that little baby die or get hurt real bad. But if you love that child, you'll go over there. First, you might say, no, get him away from it. But that devil's persistent. He'll get right back on that little baby and he'll go right back, go right back in there again. Hey, don't make that baby evil because something like that happens. He's dealing with little thoughts in his little mind. And he don't understand those things. But when you pop that hand one or two times, he'll start to go back that third time maybe, but he'll... He'll look at his hand, he'll realize it got popped, and he'll resist that spirit trying to hurt him. Just think about it. I don't believe in beating children, nothing like that, but what I'm saying, there's little things that we have to do, and sometimes we have to be firm in, in correction. And I say these things to Mark Biltz. Listen, my brother, I love you, I really do. We filmed together in Israel one time. I met you there, you seem to be a, a really nice man. And you, you reach a lot of people. But my brother, I, I, I'm sincerely from my heart, I'm asking you, you've got to go to Christ in prayer, brother. This is a serious thing. Many of the scriptures, I was right there with you. I used to think a lot of these things hadn't been fulfilled yet. That's why even uh, Rabbi Shapira believes that the house of Israel has got to go home, got to go home, got to go home. The house of Israel went home. Those scriptures were fulfilled. I didn't realize that either, brother. So I'm right there with you. And I'm going to pray with you guys. And if you've been guilty of these things or guilty of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, not realizing that it's not the right way to do, or guilty of thinking you shouldn't witness to the Jewish people the love of Jesus Christ, their only hope Let's pray together. Let's repent together. Okay. Heavenly Father, I sincerely, Lord, come to you, Father. With all my heart, dear God, I come to you, Lord. 
And I, I, Father, even myself, Lord, I say, Father, forgive me, Lord. I, I, I've taught many messages putting these prophecies in the future, not knowing they were already fulfilled. God, I would never want to mislead anybody. Nothing, never intentionally, God. You know my heart. My heart's desire is to get people to recognize you, that you are the Son of God, the living God. You are the very one that rose from the dead and you poured out. It, when, when, the, when the Roman soldier pierced your side and the blood and the water went forth, it was a testimony to that woman at the well that that life was in you. Father God, that's my sole desire, not just for the Jewish people, but for the Gentiles as well. And even, the thing is that the pouring out is already, but the Gentiles are receiving it now because the house of Israel had already received it. The scripture was fulfilled. I didn't see it. Lord, forgive me, Father. And I pray for those that are, that are, that are with me now, maybe even praying right now. God, forgive them as well, Lord. And may we, with just sincerity of heart, try to reach out to our Jewish brothers and sisters. I pray for them, Father. We love you. And I pray in the name above every name, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And it, whatever your language is, your native language, if you're an English speaker, if you're a Hebrew speaker, if you're a Spanish speaker, you just say his name in, in, in your native tongue. Because I have seen the dead raised at the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen the blinded eyes come open at the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a living testimony of knowing that these things are real. And that you are real, Father. And if there be any a sick that is listening to this message tonight, Father, that also have need of prayer, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will heal your body and make them well. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. And I just ask that God will be merciful to us and that he'll open the eyes of all Israel. If you want to support the work we're doing, if you believe that what we're doing is truly of God, I do ask you to support this ministry. You know, if we were Zionists, don't even have to say anything. But people just pour the money into Zionism, you know. And I'm not against my Jewish brothers that, are, that don't know Christ as their Savior going back to Israel looking for the Messiah. I understand they're doing that. There will be a remnant. Paul did say there will be a little remnant that are going to believe. But believe me, that remnant is from all the ages. Even the Gentile is part of the remnant, Okay. We love you. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and our mailing address right here. We thank you. And send us your information, your mailing address, your email address. Um, we're starting to send out letters. We're going to try to do this monthly uh, to where we can share with you things that we can't share here. I don't know how long this will stay available. A lot of people hate it. In fact, I just I realized today, because we started this new channel um, on YouTube there, and I'll share that with you real quick. Uh, our new channel that we have up is called, as far as our teaching channel there, Fact News Live. Excuse me, Fact News Network. I apologize, got it wrong. You might have to put it in quotation marks to get to it. That's only going to be used for news. We're not going to be dealing with controversial subjects on there other than just dealing with news. I'll, I'll share things with you about news there. But it would be a good way to, for you to stay in touch with us, stay up to date on news the way we see things that are going on. I have a lot of intelligence friends from when I worked intelligence field. And uh, so anyway, we love you guys. You can please go over there and subscribe. I think it will really be a blessing for you down the road. And also don't forget Danoon Institute, uh, our teaching channel. Because... I, I really don't like to always put these here, but in fact, it'll be on the Noon Institute as well. But if you go to the Noon Institute, uh, our teaching channel, and that's done under uh, my pen name that I write under, the Noon Institute. Um, I don't even see it on my own program here. But anyway, uh, and, and don't forget to, on Israeli News Live, resubscribe. Uh, 
YouTube has been trying to unsubscribe people by the tune of 50 people a day. So check, make sure you're subscribed, resubscribe, whatever you got to do. Anyway, God bless you.